What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Friends podcast. Uh, Andrew and I are here, and uh, we had quite the uh, quite the adventure getting started here. If you guys episode have... number four, that and is we're correct. pretending like we didn't have to start it twice, but are hey, we... man, it's podcast growing pains. I mean, I feel like it's funny because I feel like uh, I feel like you and I probably know a little bit more about podcasting than than most people are like people who would start off just from nothing right but um nonetheless it's hard to get two people synced up when they live in different places yeah well we took on a, quite the task because we're streaming it live on twitch we're streaming it with video and we're also recording audio at a quality where we want it to be very acceptable so Correct. we're recording our own audio in a recording program um, but I love it. Honestly, you know, like we started the podcast just to have fun, talk about anything, but I've legit learned a lot. And I think that, uh, learning this just helps all sorts of things. Like I I'm so excited to take on this challenge and all that. And somebody in the comments was like, yo, it's like, we're in the podcast studio with you. And it's, oh, Josh said it. Um, and it's true. Like, I like that. And I think about listening to that and all that. And it's like, yo, yeah, that's awesome. That's sick that we got to like listen to them, figure it out. Also, listen to this sassy comment. I'm sorry, why do we have to clap? Just hit record and wait a few seconds. <laughs> Everybody has to clap. If you're not clapping when you're watching, it fucks the whole thing up. <laughs> it's like Tinkerbell. We're basically, the, the podcast is basically like Tinkerbell, where if you're not clapping, we basically die. Yeah. Um, no, the clap is so when we send each other our separate audio files and we're counting one, two, three, and you hear it, it gives like some kind of uh, congruency because you can look the... at you can look at the audio waveforms and you can see like a big spike where you say one, a spike where you see two, a spike where you see three, and then a spike where you clap. So it's these four big these big spikes uh, in a sea of nothing because you're not saying anything else, and then you can just sync those four those four moments up so you know exactly where to sync um, mm -hmm. when you're putting the two audio to two separate audio files together. That's show business, baby. Because there's no way Andrew and I would be able to hit record at the same time, you know? It's like when it's like a clacker, like the the Hollywood clackers, you know, where you're like action and then you clack it and it's so loud that like you can see that that moment on on the waveform in the audio waveform so you can know exactly when action was called, you know? Yep. So, and that's show business, baby. I like how you said that twice. You're like they need to know that this is show business. Yeah, I just wanted you to acknowledge the joke. Let me tell you something. I call, I called you earlier, and <laughs> you you answered the phone like this. You said I called you up and it's ringing, and you pick it up and you're like, "Hey, Frank," and I was like, "It it it like <laughs> took me aback for a second because I was like, why did you use my name? You know what I mean? Like it's a weird thing. Like let me." Let me ask you guys in the chat, or if you're if you're listening at home, like, is it weird when people you're really close with use your name, like when they address you? It's almost like saying a full hello. Like if you well, answered the phone and you were like, "Hello, Frank," I would be like, right. "Holy shit!" Like that's how I would know if someone said that to me. That's how I would know that like you were literally taken over by an alien, and that would be like the the thing you say like under duress. You know, like if like if you called me up and I was like boy, the corn shirt is growing tall today. Then you'd know that I was being held, held hostage and you'd know to come rescue me because that would be like the code word. That's the thing I say under duress. Right. So like, is if, it, I should know this if I need to be their friend and help you. I thought we, I thought we talked about this. The corn is growing tall. The corn, the corn's growing tall today. Yeah. That's a, that's just a, I felt like that was just our thing that we've always had, you know, our, Dude, we need to talk about that. I did not know that that was a thing. It's... So if you're in duress, you're going to tell me the corn is growing tall? I would definitely now as of this moment I will definitely say that if I'm ever if I'm ever uh if I ever can't speak openly to you on the phone. Okay, I like that. I love a good friend inside joke too. But yes, I know what you're saying um and it is funny when you say somebody's name. I think about it, it adds more emphasis than uh maybe even like swearing, you know? It's almost like, like, like oh, it's it's almost like too intimate. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not. I wouldn't say it's intimate. It's just it adds, it adds a level of emphasis that it's so simple that you stop and you don't realize. You're like, wait a minute, that's weird. <laughs> so, JT said absolutely, especially when my wife does it. I feel like she's T one thousand. I'm like, yeah, exactly. for sure. 
if I was like, when you get addressed by your name, like you're in trouble or something's like very, uh, something's happening. Or something's the, other, the other person is basically saying, I need you to stop what you're doing and listen because everything that follows your name is very important. Yep. Um, no. Okay. So let's, in terms of like, uh, the corn is growing tall today for those out there listening. If you're under duress, you don't want something really obscure like that. You want something more common, like, oh, I'm just going to the store later. Like something that's just a regular piece of conversation because you don't want... Because if you're being held hostage and someone's got a gun to you and they're like, you just need to act normal, the last yeah. thing you're going to be able to get away with on the phone is saying something like, the corn is growing tall today. So don't use that if you're under duress. It's way too obscure. I just wanted okay, to make wait, sure that... So are we not doing that then? I don't think it's good. Okay, well, I need to know that. The point is... I take these things super serious. The point is, if you call me and say, hello, Frank, I'm just going to know... I'm going to hang up the phone immediately and I'm going to be like, we've been compromised. And then I'm just going to pack up all my, my material possessions that are important. And I'm just going to head towards some sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe like the desert. I, you know, I'd look into like, probably, I'd probably leave America. I think. I feel like I'm going to make you move the country like five times accidentally. Cause I'm going to forget <laughs> about you, it. Are you going to say like, like one day, hello, Frank to me, like a bunch, like on the phone. Like, is that how you answer? Like normally? occasionally it depends on the mood that i'm in today was like a really like have you ever experienced a day where i was really proud of today but you you have a day <laughs> where was proud of today you don't want to do anything in your day but you know you need to do oh boy in your as day. a dude as a content creator with like no boss god i know that feeling yeah because no one's so gonna today, hold me accountable but me right and then like it gets to be like the 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 admin of that. So you have like a completely open schedule. You, it doesn't matter. It's applicable, I think, to anybody. But you have the things that just aren't fun, but deep down you know they need to be done because the only person it negatively affects at the is end you. of the day is you. No one else is bothered by this. So today was my day of that where I was like, listen, I've been putting it off. It's Friday. Everything gets done. It's Friday, it my was, dudes. It is Friday, my dudes. You know that means it was miserable. Uh, I thought it was. It, it is. It is uh, when it is Wednesday, right? But I just made yeah. it Friday because it's how because it works. It's just. Oh, today is the day of Rebecca Black. Is that still a thing? No, no, it's not. Yeah. And it, and we need to keep it that way. It's good. We're good. Okay. What well, anyway? So it yeah, was I'm a curious it was a grindy was. day, but it was a productive day, and it it kind of put me to this point of strange i felt like i was going insane because i was so productive and i was so happy i was getting it done yet at the same time i was so sad because i hated every bit of it <laughs> and every time like a friend would call me or i'd get distracted i'd be like all right yeah i needed that so when you called me i was like hype i was like ooh, it's frank yeah so it was like an extra it was an extra emphasis it wasn't just an ordinary call because i was like oh a distraction when i need it thank goodness yeah so say it's a it's a real saved by the bell situation i guess you could say that i don't really remember much of saved by the bell i just remember that i liked the characters it's funny because when you look back at saved by the bell now which and, and there's a lot of shows like this now um the characters are kind of shitty like zach morris the, is actually a i think zach morris is a pretty terrible human being right and there's like a lot of homophobic jokes and there's all kinds of like it's a real like shows like even friends like if you look back at friends i remember watching friends in like early 2000s like whenever it was on the air like late 90s and like it was enjoyable it was like the the peak yeah. of tv at the time right this yeah. is pre-seinfeld um yep. and ross was fine i never noticed anything out of the ordinary but if you look back on ross now he's kind of a shitbag <laughs> there's all these shows that hey, just ross, don't age well shitbag. um I have a hilarious thing to tell you on, on our little podcast. And he's like, this was a, an Uber conversation in Los Angeles. I can't tell we if this means Uber. it's a, I can't. Okay. So I wasn't sure if this is a super conversation or a conversation that, that is, that revolves around an Uber. Oh, um, the well, it was just a, it's a funny anecdote. It's a funny thing that happened. Right. No, because the, the German word Uber means super. Oh, so I wasn't sure if it was a super oh. conversation. Or oh, okay. I like I have right. one I have one Uber conversation for you, like a like a super conversation for you. You know what I mean? 
you know, what's funny is if you had said that to me in the year 2000, it would have only been a super conversation. Right, because that, yeah, that's true. Well, there's actually several years after the year 2000 that you could have said that to me, but I safely backdated to a year where they would, you'd really get the joke. Andrew did, Andrew did say, uh, antecdote, and I was like, well, that's a weird place to put an extra T there, a superfluous T there. Antecdote. <laughs> Ant. <laughs> antidote i have the antidote <laughs> is the antidote in the form of an uber story i met the first black guy on friends frank wait what does that mean he was my uber driver what he was very proud to tell me that's amazing yeah it was awesome see that sounded believe... completely like a joke when you said it and i was like wait what no this is real. the story I... Eve, yeah, I believe his name was Tim Henderson, but I feel like that's such a regular name that I'm messing up. But he had such like a regular, it was like Tim. What's wrong with like having that. a regular name? No, I know. I just I wanted to like bring it up because he had an IMDb. Let me see if I can find my search history. Because he like in oh, the car. Oh, that's super easy like, then. Yeah, I would, I would, that would, that should be easy to find. How long ago was this? Yeah, like, last night. Wait, I just casually mm -hmm. brought up friends on the podcast. And last night you got an Uber that was driven by the first black guy on friends yes yeah that's real that also happened. that's discouraging because i would i'd have hoped his career like because that was like 20 years ago probably i would i would have hoped his like career took off to a point where like he wouldn't be driving uber you know what i mean tim hutchinson he was driving because he liked it he was like 61 or something like that. oh and that's cool like, yeah, i like the conversation that's cool and look at that now he's not now we're talking about him on the podcast that's kind of crazy super cool yeah tim hutchinson uh an actor and producer known for malcolm x what did he do? There's like a bunch of things. But say, yeah, in 1996. Did you, known, did you say known for Malcolm X? Yeah, I, the, I don't the know. The Spike Lee movie? Yeah, it's it's a short one though, so I don't know. Like, They probably just threw him that. Speaking of which, Malcolm X by Spike Lee is probably one of my... Like, I, that's a movie I've seen like three times, and it's like four hours long. It's a very good movie. Really? Yes. It's got Denzel Washington. Who? Oh, yeah, I see him on the cover. Anyway, um, yeah pretty crazy and we were going to um why am i spacing the name in comedians and cars getting coffee jerry seinfeld goes to canters with um seth rogan huh oh yes they do so they, they do go to canters and we seth rogan an uber to canters seth rogan comments about how he loves it yeah it was super good um, That's someone, my story. someone in the chat I said, uh, I think friends was the first thing I ever saw Paul Rudd in. Uh, that's sad because he was in clueless as well with Alicia Silverstone and clueless is a fantastic nineties movie. I so. love a good hidden star in early movies. And the, the funny thing is Paul Rudd looks the same now as he did in clueless. So he's got that going for him. True. Uh, Nicholas cage in fast times at Ridgemont high. Is that? Uh, he was not in that movie. Are you sure? Who are you thinking of? The dude that flips burgers. Is it was Nicolas Cage in Fast Times at Ridgemont High? I. <laughs> this is definitely an episode of us consulting the Google, but that's okay. Judge... Can we call the episode Googling stuff? It looks like Judge Reinhold flips burgers. Oh, he does. Oh, my God. Oh, what is up, Frank? Oh, Andrew with the my media. God. Yeah. That's so obscure. Yeah, that's where he became my favorite actor. That's so obscure, dude. I like that I knew Judge Reinhold was, uh, was flipping burgers with him. I didn't know that Nicolas Cage was. Judge Reinhold actually went on to go into, he played uh, the Eddie Murphy's like partner in uh, Beverly Hills Cop movies. Wow. So this is some weird ass trivia you guys are getting here about about uh obscure actors that were in movies from twenty five years ago, so Yeah, there you go. That's that's what I like to tune into my podcasts for. Yeah, they started with uh God, what did we even start with? Some ridiculous nonsense. Oh yeah, the, we were still talking about the the you calling me hey Frank though. Like that's super weird, right? It is super weird. What yeah. about what about a significant <laughs> other? Like what if you're with a significant other and they're like Hey Andrew, like it adds emphasis. No, it feels weird. It's so weird. It's emphasis because you're either in trouble or they super love you in that moment. Okay, so here's the thing: if you're with someone, 
and you tell them you love them and then you put your name put their name on the end like that seems that's okay right because that's a really strong intimate moment right it adds emphasis yeah that i think that adds emphasis but like i don't know just saying it like in casual conversation it feels rigid right it feels impersonal and you know it's funny because adding the name almost makes it feel less personal than if you didn't add the name and i think i've had this conversation before oh it 100 percent does because it's but it adds emphasis but sometimes it doesn't though it just feels awkward that's emphasis that's awkward (laughs) emphasis that's awkward (laughs) emphasis i feel like you just i feel like we just did an infomercial you're like you know that feeling that's awkward emphasis I feel like I actually could do like a good um, awkward emphasis commercial. Okay. Hello, welcome to awkward emphasis. <laughs> ever been a situ- ever been in a situation with your pals and wanted to make something feel a little weirder than it needed to be? Hello, Frank. <laughs> Why don't we podcast soon? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Here, here. Let me. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm just going to give my friend Andrew a call right now. So hold on, I'm going to call my buddy Andrew up. Now it's going to ring. Ring, ring. Ring, 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 ring. He probably doesn't answer on the first ring. Ring, ring, ring. He wants to play it cool. Well, it's rung ring, like ring. six times. I don't know what's taking him so long. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, there it is. I'm getting a call from Frank. Hope he picks what's up, up Frank? No, it just feels so awkward. I just... I. So, like, okay, so here's the thing. I think the what's up actually tempered it a little bit. I didn't feel as awkward when you said what's up, right? Okay. You didn't say uh, what's up, though. You said hey. No, I, I said hello, Frank. Did, you did not say hello. There's no <laughs> way, dude. <laughs> I think There's I did. no way. All hello, right. Frank. So if I'm like, hey, Andrew. Like, you, know, you got to do this low, creepy voice, too. You're like, hey, Andrew. How are you? I would think you were in the bathtub. Oh my god! Hey, you're listening to uh, Andrew Radio. I, you're the star of Andrew Radio. That would be Frank hosting a jazz night in the bathtub, and then thinking about me and being like, "I'm gonna call Andrew to see what song I should play next." I think it's worth noting that it's pretty dangerous to take baths with electrical devices uh, nearby, whether it's a. Did, Go ahead. Did, 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 does a cell phone count for that? No, but I assume that I'm like if I'm if I'm broadcasting from the bathroom, I got a laptop or like a a computer nearby right or a microphone i picture you doing a mic arm and it like pivoting from the from the outside of the bathroom like the like almost like the counter and you just extend it out i mean who hasn't done that who hasn't brought their mic arm with their 400 dollars mic into the bathroom to, to broadcast yo we've all been there right fuck around and record a podcast an audio podcast episode in the bathtub Wait, we would we each be in our own bathtubs? <laughs> no, that feels too weird. That feels that's what I'm saying. Sexual. Like I don't, don't like want to be right. Like I don't want to be in my bathtub and know you're in your bathtub. And like we're obviously naked. Like I'm just not. That's just not a place I want to go yet. Uh, no matter. No, not at all. I'm no matter how many. To, no matter how many I Hello Franks to... you send me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to be the guest on a podcast and not tell them but record the whole thing in my bathtub. I don't think that's weird though. Like, because only you know that, right? Like they would, would would you tell them afterwards at the very end? Thanks for joining us. By the way, uh, you're welcome. I I filmed or I I recorded this whole thing. I was in the back. I I was, I was scrubbing the filth off my body while we recorded. (laughs) I'm so pruning right now. Right. That's not a thing. Um, no, baths are te- tempted, uh, not, what am I saying right now? Baths are you primarily for relaxing, I imagine. I cannot, like, what is that, right? Like, you never be like, oh man, I'm dirty, I have to take a bath. Like, that's No, because then you're just filth. literally sl- slitting ar- sliding around in your own filth, right? Like, that's the thing I never understood about baths. I'm like, if you're dirty, you're just yeah. literally swimming in the, in the filth, right? Yeah, it's weird. It's not ideal. It's not an ideal situation. What, why, why is it, I'm trying to think, I'm going back to like, because when you're a tiny child, it's always, it's bath time. You have to take a bath. Right. Because kids Where can't you... have, kids can't have showers, you know what I mean? Because they're small. So at what point, I don't remember as a child, is it, 
when you can stand. I want to tell you something. You... As someone without kids, I, I wonder these things too. I wonder as a parent how you know when your child's ready. You're like, well, maybe it's today's shower day. I don't know. What are they? What are you, six years old? I guess that's a good age. Is it four? Is it 10? I don't know. I don't know what the shower age is. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Do you just keep trying until you get it? You're like, well, it's too, you know, it's Tuesday. I guess we'll try. We'll try. Oh, no, you're still too small. All right. We'll try again in what a year. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to like figure these, these steps out, you know? Yeah. And somebody, somebody in the chat said that they can have showers, but most are freaked out by it, which is, uh, that's a funny concept to me. <laughs> like as an adult, you're too far removed from as an it. Adult. You're yeah, like, right, no, exactly. no, I can't even understand being freaked out by a shower. Like, it's so funny. Standing Cause you're like, water, that's one thing, bud. but if that's coming from the ceiling, <laughs> we're out. That's, <laughs> If we made a make that for a fucking second, if we made a makeshift pool in the bathtub in the bathroom every other day, that's fine. But if it just comes from the ceiling, I'm out. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> oh, somebody said uh, my son decided at eight he wanted to shower. Okay, so that's a line. We have a line. At but that's least a, we have something. It feels weird if I was a kid to make that decision. You know what? I'm gonna be like, you know what? I think I'm. A, I think it's a shower day, mom. I'd be like. How would you know? Because you don't have any prior shower experience. You know what I mean? Well, going back to episode one or two, where I was telling you about um, falsely solidifying facts that I make up in my head, given that comment of a uh, son taking a shower at eight, I would just say that it's illegal for children to shower under eight years old. <laughs> oh, so you just make a, a law. You just make a right. fake law. Yeah. Yeah. And, if you, what and if then you, that covers it all. But, okay, someone also said, uh, someone also said, I've been giving my kids showers since they were babies. It's so much faster and less annoying. So it makes me wonder if you're just, you know, hindering yourself unintentionally because mm -hmm. maybe you should be giving them showers at six because it's just easier. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't either, man. And I wonder, it's weird because I wonder, like, if as a parent, I'm just going to know these things. Like, where do you get this information? Do you just Google it? Because, like, our parents See, didn't that, have Google. That comes back to the thing of being, like, I'm afraid that I'm not ready to be a parent. But no like, one, like, knows this, right? Like, you don't, like, learn all of this and then become a parent, right? Correct. That ha it, Absolutely. Like, it's it's life, right? Like, you, you start doing something and then you just figure it out as you go. But I would just imagine that there's like, there's probably like homie parents, like, right. Like you like make your friends that also have kids, their friends, you know, like the kids are friends. You make friends with the parents and you're probably learning together and you're like, Oh, did your kid do this or this? And like, Oh cool. I did this, whatever. But I feel like there would just be a couple things where I would be like, that's weird. I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Where, I mean, like, where can we go? As non-parents, I don't know if, if our, I think feel like our, our sky, our, our ceiling is pretty low, you know? Totally. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to record a podcast in the bath one day. Are you going to tell me when it's over? I'll call you. I'll say, hey, Frank. <laughs> wait. So, wait, are we, I assume we're not going to be live streaming that episode. You're going to be like, yeah, I just can't today. And I'll be like, okay, that's weird, but I guess that's That's fine. his bath episode. <laughs> that's it. We just know. Yeah, that's but see, you'll know. That's <laughs> wait, no, Frank. That's when I'm in duress. You'll call me and you'll be like, "Are you streaming today?" And I'll be like, "No, I think I'm going to take a podcast or I'm going to record the podcast in the bath today." And then I'll just be like, "All right, weird flex, but okay." And they'll be like, "Man, that sure does sound like something normal." Andrew would say, that's "Maybe if he said something about the corn growing tall, we'd be suspicious." <laughs> but him, ta him recording a podcast in the bath—that's normal. God, every week he's that's taking a pod. He's too. recording the podcast in the bath. This is totally. Uh, <laughs> Not out of the realm of possibility, thankfully. Well, and then I'll be like, well, I'm glad you're okay. See you later. How did we get here? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the theme of the podcast, right? I feel like there, I, there's no real... I'm never surprised at where we end up because it's all... That's just how it goes, you know? It's all tangent. Yeah, that's, that's super true. Are you going to the hot sauce cook-off in Florida? Did that happen yet? No. Are you going to come back? Oh, I wish. When, I, I when think is I'm it? Come back in December. Oh, that seems good though. We can hang out in December. Mm -hmm. When? Uh, yeah. do you know when it is? 
No, is Dan's around? Dan's and Elk Tears were talking about coming down for it, and I would definitely go if that's the case. But mm. outside of that, I really don't know if I'd go by my. I wouldn't go by myself. Well, I mean, it, the funny thing is, I would only go for the camaraderie because, as you learn, for sure, I uh, I have the spice tolerance of a tiny child. Your spice tolerance is actually unbelievably bad. I've never seen anything like it before. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like your I feel like your mouth is literally under underdeveloped. Uh, I don't know. That's another parenting thing. When do you in, introduce spicy foods? Because I didn't have spicy foods, and now I have I have the spice so, tolerance of a child. Spicy foods kind of reminds me of like alcohol, right? Like you kind of give your kid a sip of like you're like, hey, what are you? <laughs> Damn it, Frank! No, <laughs> no, listen to this. Listen to this. No, no, no. Like you know when you're ten or when you're eight or when you're twelve or however you're super young, and your kid's like hey, can I try? And you're like, yeah, sure, have a sip. And then they'll, like, have a sip of beer, right? And they'll be like, ah, this is terrible. And then they, they just don't want it again after that. But then, like, like everyone's done that. Everyone as a kid has had a sip of beer or, like, a sip of, of what their of, of, like, wine or whatever their parents were drinking. And, so I um, had a sip of hot sauce and then I'm out? Right. So, like, for me, I think, like, my parent, my dad would always put, like, uh, hot red pepper flakes on food. Like, you know, the the spice, right? Like, the red pepper flakes. And eventually, like... I would just start putting them on things, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. This is a good, uh, this is a, <laughs> when they are three months old from babyhood. Is babyhood a word? Babyhood. It's the prequel to Robin Hood. Yeah, it goes babyhood, then Robin Hood. They're just saying that you show them that movie when they're three months old to help develop their spice tolerance. It feels like something babyhood that happens gradually over time, though, right? Like, I mean... I feel like the first time you have something spicy, you're not going to like it. The second time, you might not like it. But the third time, it's like, you know, you, come, you get to a point where, like, you're kind of growing used to it. Like, it's it's an, it's an acquired taste. It's literally, I think, um, the definition of an acquired taste, you know, because you just keep keep liking it a little bit more. That actually makes sense. <laughs> My mom started me on Smirnoff Ice when I was young. I was hooked. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that sounds... It sounds terrible when you say it like that. This chat is a podcast in itself. Nope. I'm telling you, dude, we're open up Zencaster. Everyone's joining in. It's just going to be a whole ruckus. It's going to be great. It's going to be an open forum. It's going to be a town hall meeting. This is why I do like streaming podcasts because you get a lot more, not material per se, but like it's a lot more, um, there's a there's a better momentum it feels like. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot sure. of things to pull from. Although I hope that it's not like if anybody's listening audio wise without the stream, I hope they're not like, oh, now they're talking about nothing. No, because I, I well, because I always like to, I always like to read the comments so people know exactly what we're referring to. Like Josh, for example, mm -hmm. said my sister and I used to drink pepperoni juice and see who could drink more. Um, that just sounds like drinking pickle juice almost. I feel like those are very similar acidic, uh, vinegary tastes. And um, pepperonis themselves are are delicious. What's the difference between a pepperoni and a and a banana pepper? Is pepperoni just hotter? Where did broccolini come from? Where did it come from? Like, what is, what's its origin? Since when? Since when did it first appear? Why didn't you tell me about broccolini, Frank? Broccolini is delicious. I've only just heard. It's very. It's a very underused vegetable. Where was I? Where has it been? Like you can't blame. What is it? You can't blame other people for your ignorance, Andrew. Okay. It's it's like asparagus. Yeah, it's like a it's broccoli. like a, it's like a thin asparagus. Yeah, it's it's delicious. Where did it come from? What are you asking me? What's wrong with you? You're being very strange. You sound like a robot that's come from the future and is asking. <laughs> you're asking all these questions, but like because you just want to understand humankind. Where did it come from? <laughs> Explain broccolini to me, Frank. Episode four: Andrew got abducted by aliens. Answered the phone. Hello, Frank. <laughs> inquires about where to find broccolini tell me about your broccolini why hot sauce infiltrates his defenses and asks how to grow corn taller the name broccolini is a registered trademark of man packing is that a real thing like it's a literally like a corporation owned vegetable that's the most crazy See, I told thing you it came from somewhere <laughs> this is the most crazy thing i've ever seen i just would have assumed it was uh you know a plant that grows in the wild and you could just harvest it like like you do as an alien yourself you would probably know about harvesting i would imagine human aliens made broccolini 
This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Um, why is it that banana flavored things don't taste like banana? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I get uh, lost uh, in that thought. Let me tell you something. Mike loves Mike, my roommate, a uh, good friend of mine, loves banana flavored anything, and it's the weirdest thing ever, dude. Dude, it's so good. Oh god, you too. I love bananas and I love banana flavored things, but it is two entirely different things. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Um, uh, you know, man, I think it's just, I think it's just, yeah, like someone said, it's just too complex to simulate, I think. And I think it's just, I think that's just as simple of an answer as you're going to get. Like, it's just, sometimes you can't simulate flavors because you're not, it's not made from bananas, you know? But if they, there's so many other flavors that are so easier to simulate. Why, yeah. Why do you sound so sad? Don't, don't be, <laughs> <laughs> hello andrew don't be sad that one actually really got i was like oh but why not the bananas <laughs> but yeah like it's funny because you've been living with banana flavored things for like what 30 years almost and it's like well i feel like if you're not used to it now i didn't like burst any bubble for you but i've never had the platform to inquire <laughs> well here we are <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad you can express yourself one day i'm gonna grow up and i'm gonna start a podcast with my pal and i'm gonna finally ask all right, this is it. This was the whole reason you wanted to start this podcast was because you just wanted to come to the episode where you can finally ask about banana flavored things and uh, get to the truth of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Did mm -hmm. you... Bananas are gross and shouldn't be taught... Bananas themselves? Or banana flavored like things? Thing to... Bananas themselves are good. I enjoy a good banana. I just wish they didn't go bad in like 13 seconds. Oh my god! Like I'll they buy are a I'll, time bomb of fruits. I'll buy a four, I'll buy four bananas on Monday. By Tuesday, three of them are gone, and I'll have to. I've eaten, I've eaten one. Three of them are like wilted. I mean, they're like they're like completely brown and and mushy. And I'm like, wow, it's only been like twelve hours. This is so weird. <laughs> have you ever tried to freeze? This was a thing um, that I I started doing when I was making like protein shakes, where. I was just like freezing bananas before they would go bad. But the first banana that I did, I did something really stupid. And I wonder how many people have also done this. Oh, I'm, Can I'm, you guess what I did? The first banana? Yeah. Like the first man on the moon, right? The first banana? Yeah. I have no idea what you did with this first banana. I froze it with the peel on. <laughs> do you not do that? <laughs> I never knew you didn't do that. I wouldn't even think about that. I would just toss it in the freezer. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. Because somebody's like, well, yeah, just freeze regular bananas. You can then use them for protein shakes, blend them up, whatever. I'm like, That's brilliant. But then the peel freezes to the banana <laughs> right. and you have to like shade it. Doesn't it, it ruins it entirely. It completely ruins it. But then if you peel it, then you're fine. I've never thought about that before. I would have just, I would have literally just grabbed a banana and been like, huh, toss it in the freezer hole. Like I wouldn't even, <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't, I'm not alone. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think to unpeel that because like, I, yeah. because any other fruit, like sometimes, you know, you'll peel an apple if you don't want the skin or whatever, but like, I'm never going to peel an apple and stick it in the freezer. Right. So like, this is a very rigorous situation. There's very few fruits, you few fruits, few fruits that you would stick in the freezer and especially yeah. with like an inedible peel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, cause I just yeah. look at peels on fruit as like their protective casing. So why wouldn't I, it's like, if you're freezing a piece of candy, it's like, if you're freezing a Snickers bar, would you take the wrapper off of it first and stick it in the, in the, in the freezer like that? N probably not. Right. No, that's what nightmares are made of. Nobody does that. That's, what are you a maniac? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So like, it's weird to like that. I would have never, that would have never crossed my mind. And I appreciate this. Uh, I appreciate this lesson that you've given me, dude, I'm here to help. And I'm, I'm here to admit my defeats and my, my losses. That was one of them. Luckily bananas are like the cheapest thing in the world. They are proportionally cheap for what you get. And also uh, it's worth noting that um, if you want to make banana bread, one thing to do is when your bananas are going bad, you can freeze them and then you can just use them for banana bread with the peel off. Preferably. If you guys ever go to someone's house and they offer you banana bread and the banana still has its peel on it, just fucking leave. Just get out of there. 
Yeah, no, don't get out of there. Except if it was me the first time that I froze a banana, then please. But don't I don't think. But I don't. But here's the thing. Know. I don't think you're gonna take the banana out of the freezer and then cut it up with the peel on and bake that into banana bread, right? You would have stopped before that point. Oh, you know, right? You know what so you like, did wrong. if they baked it into the banana bread with the peel on it, just just leave. Just don't even. <laughs> that person is beyond saving. Get on out of town. They're gone. When you make banana pudding, I learned a trick that you get the pudding flavored vanilla, and then the the bananas add the flavor. You don't double banana. What would be the second banana if you did double banana? How do you mean? Banana, banana flavored? flavored pudding. But aren't you making the pudding? Well, I like. I think. When I tried it, I made like I did it with Jello pudding. Well, so you're not like you're not like mix. <laughs> Stop fucking saying pudding. <laughs> but you're not like making the pudding. Like I thought you when you were making it from scratch. You know, you're just like when I I bought I bought the mix. I bought the banana no. pudding mix. No, you are making it from scratch because you you do the pudding <laughs> stuff. You take the box, you get the box of pudding, and then you. <laughs> Just stop, man. <laughs> Just stop. No, stop. <laughs> stop what, Frank? Just stop saying pudding. <laughs> okay, but what did you say? You said when you're making banana pudding, right? Can and I then, say it or not, and man? Then, <laughs> and then you said the trick is to get the vanilla pudding. But I'm like, if you're already getting the pudding, you're not making it, right? You're just buying banana pudding and putting some bananas in it, right? No, like, okay, we love barbecue food, right? Correct. When we go to barbecue and we get dessert and you order banana pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It's more than just the... <laughs> It's more than just the pudding. <laughs> There's all sorts of fixins too. Like what? What kind of fixins go with the? Uh, what was the dessert again? What were we talking about? Banana pudding. <laughs> you have the fresh sliced bananas, and you have the whipped cream, and you have vanilla wafers. Yeah, those are all delicious accoutrements for the for the banana pudding. <laughs> and then all together, that makes the pudding. And the banana taste comes from the nanas. You totally said a whipped cream. You totally did. I was like, well, I'm not going to say it because we're too busy on the pudding here, but. You said what? Whip. You said yeah, there's a whipped, the whipped cream. And that was real emphasis, heavy emphasis on the WH there. Oh, man. Oh, my God. So use the vanilla kind. So, guys, Please. if you're making banana pudding at home, just use the vanilla pudding. And add bananas to it because the bananas will flavor it. They do the rest for you. What if you got a different flavor pudding, like strawberry pudding, and then you added bananas to it? I'm not here to judge, but I don't think that would come out good. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that <laughs> position. I agree with you on both counts. <laughs> Ooh, that was a laugh, my guy. The strawberry pudding is this? I don't... You know what? Probably. Fuck it. Every kind of pudding exists. I would imagine it has to. There's like a whole grocery aisle just for. <laughs> Go ahead. What what's it? What is that? What is that aisle dedicated to? Pudding. Oh Jesus. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> have you ever seen those memes, uh, which are based on real things from like the '70s, where most of it is just Jello-based nonsense? Where they're like they're just like old old timey meals that you could make in like the seventies and it's all gelatin based. Like it's like put slices of ham and cucumber in this jello mold and you got dinner and it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why would you ever make this? You know what I'm talking about? You're talking about spam? No, I'm literally talking about jello. But like they would they would just stick any kind of um like any kind of food, any kind of nonsense food that you have around the house. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you and link it in the chat. Okay. That's great. Ooh, we're involved in the chat. I've always wanted to do this. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna send it right here in the chat so you guys can take a gander. And if you guys are listening at home, I just googled 
Jello recipes, and it's 17 horrifyingly disgusting retro gelatin recipes. And uh, it's a BuzzFeed article. And you can just... Like... Did you click on it? Are you over... Oh. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. there it is. You can see it in there. Wait, can you see it on my... Sc- what? No? It's No, I just linked it in Discord and I linked it in chat. So you just you pick your poison as to where you want to look. But this shit looks horrifying. You pick your pudding. Cottage cheese and salmon mold. Cucumber relish salad. This isn't real. There's no way. No, this is 100% real. Lime, this is just photo filter let me, let that me, they scan. No, let me tell you something. Lime cheese salad is number six, right? Dissolve one package lime jello in one cup hot water. <laughs> <laughs> Add three quarters cups cold water. So you're basically just making the jello, right? Two tablespoons yeah. vinegar, one teaspoon grated onion. You fucking lost me right there. You want me to add grated onion to lime jello? Who grates an onion? When has that ever been a thing? Pour half cup mixture into one quart ring mold. You know the ring molds? Like the big ring cake. The, the ring molds. Like it's like it's like how you make a, like a pineapple upside down cake. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's a big oh, cylindrical yes. mold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so they used to use these all the time for the jello things. Chill until firm, chill remaining jello until slightly thickened, then fold in one cup cottage cheese, one tablespoon mayonnaise, blend it, pour onto firm jello, chill until firm, unmold, garnish with salad greens, fill center with seafood salad. Nothing about this sounds appetizing. Wait, are we still? Oh my god, we're still in the same lime cheese salad. Yes, that was the same recipe. The whole thing. Dude. Oh no. Final steps toss in trash. <laughs> <laughs> See, no, that's the thing. This is absolutely made up. There's no way this is made up, right? Oh, actually, that one's scanned from, like, a newspaper. Right. This one says 1973 Curtain Publishing is Incorporated in New York, New York. Like, it's an emerald cantaloupe. It's literally a cantaloupe. Jesus. It's just, I mean, like, these recipes are just hot trash. It's unbelievable. (laughs) Pressed brisket of beef. And it (laughs) looks like... (laughs) It looks like they took... What is that? It looks like they took the idea of bacon <laughs> and put it in jello. It looks like if you had a um what's the one what's the beef that beef wellington? It looks like a beef wellington, only instead of bread, you use jello as the as the exterior. <laughs> the Californian jello ring. They warned me about this. They said, when you move to California, listen, bud, it's going to be pretty good, but you're going to have to get yourself a Californian Jello ring. Oh, I was going to say that it was a totally different, like, a totally different warning. Like, hey, listen, when you go to California, it's really cool and all, but you got to be careful because of the California Jello ring. Uh, a, a lot of people get wrapped up in the California Jello ring, and you just don't want anything to do with it, all right? Listen, bud, I know it sounds like a scam, but you're going to want to get earthquake insurance and California Jello ring insurance. <laughs> Because <laughs> that jello ring is no joke, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Pernicious dude in chat <laughs> called it beef jellington, which is absolutely disgusting. Or like haggis, like a Scottish tradition. It's like, yeah, you know, Hollywood, you're gonna you're gonna meet a lot of famous people. Maybe they invite you over for dinner. Get ready for the California jello ring. They're gonna get to cause they no one expects the California jello ring. The thing is like I wonder when <laughs> Jello was was invented. And it makes me feel like it was invented around this time. And all of these people in the 70s just went batshit crazy for these crazy jello recipes. They were just like, if I put this liquid in the fridge, it hardens into like a gelatinous, uh, like a gelatinous, like disgusting, not disgusting, I guess, because at the time it's delicious. When you add nothing to like lime jello, if you just make lime jello by itself, that's a solid, that's, that's solid. I like it. <laughs> Totally it's when sure. you, it's when you start adding cottage cheese and mayonnaise and seafood salad to it. That's where you lose me, and I'm just like, <laughs> no, I'm good. Although I think you could make that argument for just about anything. You'd be like, hey, bud, I want you to try this chocolate, and I'd be like, seems great. You'd be like, all right, I I'm want at- you to try this chocolate with cottage cheese, mayonnaise. What was the other oh, thing you said? I got you this Hershey bar, but I want you to put a little of my seafood salad spread on top of it. Can you do that? <laughs> I grated a little onion on top too for you. I have two thoughts at once and I don't know what to do. So I'm going to say them both. 
the side we go. With you know the them. kind of the kind of people who make this shit are the kind of people who don't peel their bananas in their banana bread. Like these are the same people, and they're all serial killers. I think every person who created one of these recipes is a secret serial killer. Yeah, they're the extras in Texas Chainsaw. Massacre. If I was if I was a detective and I was trying to close old cases, yeah, the first people I would look for are the the fucking <laughs> authors of these recipes. Get me a list of everyone that's bought Jello in the last twenty four hours. <laughs> Just in the last 40 years, I'd be like, we need to go back to the 60s and figure out who wrote this. <laughs> All right, I have two thoughts. One, it's kind of funny you're talking about them like inventing foods in Jello, like in the 70s. And I don't actually know when it was invented, but like some, it's an invented food, right? Like it's not just like it grows. Or no, whatever. you're not like, it's not like milk, you know, where you're like, oh, this comes from a natural source. This is like completely, right. in, this is an invention. What a wild ride to go from inventing something really you can just fucking make this gelatinous thing and you can put pretty much fucking anything in it eat it you're gonna love it but the it's... 70s is like oh fuck yeah bro let me try to put some fucking beef brisket in but it but who proposed that because it's like a it's like a dessert like jello has always been a dessert for me it's like it's it's default sweet sure yeah oh no you don't that's 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 the the mullet haircut of <laughs> of food things you don't no one's mix like business and pleasure you don't you don't put jello in entree it's like if you go to a, if you're like ordering pizza and they're like yeah what do you you're just uh what do you want on your pizza and i'd be like you got any lime jello you can toss on that bitch <laughs> i would just be like uh let's I, call jets i, I let's don't be like hey listen you did half cheese just like we asked the other half had no lime yeah jello. and like last week if i called in and i was like hey i ordered my pizza half pepperoni half lime jello I can understand her not wanting to make it because the Jello has to chill. You have to you have to grate the garlic into the Jello. You have to make sure the seafood <laughs> salads mixed in. I get that. That's complicated. But all I wanted was cheese, so it's really I don't you know I don't understand the complication here. Hey Jets, I ordered this whole cheese pizza split with uh, peppers on the side, and you just sent me a whole bunch of lime Jello. She's like, listen, the orders come from the internet. So when it says lime jello, we send out lime jello. I don't know what you want me to do here. I have a pizza place. Give me pizza. It's lime jello today. So we have so we have no control over what gets printed out. I'm sorry. We can't the only thing I could do is I could I, I could send you some lime jello, but I'd have to charge you for it. We could maybe send you orange jello. I think I saw some of that. That's I, th- I think we have that. It reminds me of the office episode. Where where Michael puts uh, Splenda in his scotch. Do you remember that? <laughs> no. He's walking around the office. It's like when he's it's like when he's leaving. And he's walking around the office and he's like, "What are you drinking, scotch?" And he's like, "Scotch and Splenda. Tastes like Splenda. <laughs> Kicks like scotch." And I'm like, "Oh dear God, <laughs> Michael Scott, That's why?" So good. Okay, so I had these two thoughts when we first started talking about Jello. And the first was, it's funny that like that was the hype food where they're like, yeah, Jello, fucking make it into anything. And now here we are talking about broccolini where they're like, no, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, right. you, you you're talking about, now. no, you're talking about broccolini. No, there's no broccolini they hype. They are talking about it, no, Frank. No, there's no broccolini hype sweeping the nation. You're not like, there it is. You know what, guys? Uh, I think broccolini in, in the, in the in the 2010s is uh, it's just about as hyped as jello was in the 70s and i'm gonna i open up twitter these days and the only thing i see in my feed is broccoli it's it's yeet and it's kids talking about broccolini that's my twitter that's all i see it's all i can't even go on social media anymore i feel like that's all it is it started off so wholesome it started off as a place where i could network with my friends where i could update them on my life now all it is broccolini rt broccolini like broccolini share broccolini <laughs> retweet broccoli you know what i want to be honest with you man um i feel like you might be following the wrong people on on twitter or on social media if, if your feed is just full of broccolini there or i think your obsession with broccolini might have gone a little too far i'm gonna be honest with you wait is there another way because i just go on and i'll do like twitter.com slash broccolini is that is that a problem is that a Twitter? Now I need to look. No, that's... Oh, God. It's like... The only thing that could possibly be is like a meme Twitter where someone just literally posts the same image of broccolini every day of the year. and you know, they, It's one of those accounts where they just post the same image every day. Yeah, or that's like someone's I, nickname that's like, hey, broccolini, what's going on? And then you're like, well, oh, let's see. Broccolini. Um, there's two C's in it. Don't let it deceive you. Um... My other thought 
Diana is Broccolini. Oh, she's 9,000 followers. Dang. Good for her. See? Everywhere. 9,000 Bro- people care Broccolini's, about Broccolini. Broccolini's big game. Yeah. Um, my other thought about Jello when we first started was um, I've thought about this, and I don't know in my lifetime if I'll ever actually be able to experience this, but it would go one of two ways where it's awesome or you maybe die. Jumping into a pool of jello. Oh, that is interesting because, like, you don't know how much tension there's going to be on the surface. You know what I mean? That's right. I, I also, imagine it in my head to be like, this is ridiculous and fun. I also wonder if it's like 500 gallons of jello, like a swimming pool, if the, the elasticity of it would be so great that it would bounce you back out and you'd end up breaking your neck. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want it to be that. Because elastic. I don't, I you'd want... have to, you'd have to actually fracture the surface in order to kind of sink into it. You know what I mean? Right. And then as soon as you fracture it, like, you know how like jello, like it has like the, it kind of just like implodes when you crack into the top. Well, you kind of, yeah, you're breaking the surface tension. Right. Like, I mean, that's the important part. Um, so if you do that, then do you just like sink to the bottom and like essentially drown? In well, jello? so here's the thing. When tragic. we, when we make a Patreon page, this has to be our first Patreon goal. Whereas like, if we get X amount, Andrew will fill a, will fill a, a, a swimming pool up with, uh, up with jello. And then Andrew can jump into it and we'll record it and we'll, you know, stream it and see how that goes. If that happens, like talk about dreams coming true and manifestation. If ever there is a time where we get to a point where there is a Patreon or a GoFundMe or an anything where a swimming pool could that, be filled with jello. That enables you to do it, this, yeah. Dreams come true. That's how you I think that's how you know I think that's how you know you've made it, right? You're like, wow. I, I, when I started this podcast, I was a boy. But since then, I've taken out a swimming pool and filled it with jello, and I've become a man. Yeah, dude. And now I'll be jumping then, into it. I could be a motivational speaker with no, that. No. No. Why? No. Why? I'll go to call I'll go to high schools, colleges, anything, and they'll be like, Today we have Andrew Cram. He started a simple podcast with a friend with nothing in mind as a goal and by the end of it they filled a swimming pool with jello and he did not die so it was the exact right amount of elasticity after your initial jump which is the important part do we get in and just like swim around and kind of like break it up and then we're just literally swimming with like because after you break jello like if you have a solid piece of jello you can break it up and it gets kind of like crumbly right and like kind of yes it gets like almost like i you know i hate to harken back to the cottage cheese but it has a kind of like cottage cheese consistency where it's like it's it's more of a liquid consistency but it's like tiny clumps in it you know what i mean Hmm. well i'm not kidding i'm i'm afraid that i might die in a pool of jello if we did this would we have to sur- the- what's where do you think the death comes from what's what aspect of it is is causing the death Okay, you break so a swimming pool is what like eight feet deep or something? No, it's deeper than that. Uh, an un, are we talking about an underground pool or an above ground yeah, pool? Like an like an in ground pool. It's like twelve. Depending, it twelve. It depends on the pool. Ten or twelve feet. So, <clears throat> twelve feet seems deep. You jump in. Well, if I'm six foot, like I can go underwater. I think it's probably eight. I would say eight, eight ish maybe. Somewhere between eight to twelve feet of a pool. You jump in. <laughs> And I have this fear that you jump in and then it it consumes you. Like you break all the layers and, blah, 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 and it, it goes down. And then how do you how do you swim out? Like it's too Oh, see, but that's too fucking deep. I'm thinking of an above ground pool that's like, oh, because like you're thinking of an underground pool, which is almost impossible to do because you can't clean that out when you're done. Right. That's We're, my thing. No, that's, that's a dream ridiculous. Come true. No, that's not a dream. You're ruining someone's in, in ground pool. You can't just set that up. We could go to like the pool store, <laughs> buy an above ground pool, like a, a four or five foot above ground pool and just fill that. Right. That's so much more practical. I imagine seeing like, no, see when you say that's the dream, you're talking about a literal dream that you had where you fell asleep and you have this dream of you're like drowning in a, in a pool of jello, like an underground pool of jello. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's not realistic, though. Like, I think that if you're doing this realistically, we're going to just buy an above-ground pool for a couple hundred bucks, however much they cost. And, 
like because even then like it's not quicksand where like you're trying to dig your way out of the underground pool and you just can't that's how i think about it that's how i think about it frank you're yes yes you're painting the picture yes see that's terrifying because no you would just keep sinking because you can't push yourself up exactly right there's no there's no yeah you wouldn't float and you wouldn't push yourself you're gonna be less buoyant i fear and respect jello all at once I don't know. I don't know if this is a cause for respecting it, but I can't imagine why this is afraid, a, a fearful thing for you. If it's an underground pool that's taller, you could also just not go in the eight foot portion, ten foot portion of the pool. No, that's okay. not an option. <laughs> well, then you're gonna die. I'm sorry. It's, I don't know what to tell you. It's a cannonball straight into a regular home's in ground swimming pool. Did you try? I eat, imagine. Did you try eating your I way imagine out? Imagine the jello is green. When I think about it, the jello is. Good. I think that's also because we've talked about lime jello quite a bit today, and I feel like that's. Uh, I think that was just subconsciously implanted somehow. Honestly, you might be right. Yeah. Yeah, because we've um, lime jello has been the default jello of our of our generation. I think. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I've thought about this. Realistically, I'd say I probably think about this every four to five months. <laughs> I've never thought about it in an above ground pool. That's insane to me because that's the that's what if you watch any YouTube video where someone's doing some kind of pool bullshit like Mentos and Coke or Jello or like the little balls whatever they do, like it's always mm-hmm. an above ground pool. No one's gonna ruin their their below their underground pool for this bullshit. Like, the, uh, no, that's why an it's underground a dream pool is true though. That's crazy. That shouldn't make it a dream just because it's harder to do. That's something they do in Dubai. No, they don't do that in Dubai. That's why it's so nice. They made Dubai. It's a completely man-made place. It's, it's so insane. nice. It's Dubai so nice that you can make a jello swimming, an in-ground jello swimming pool. When our podcast gets big enough, do you want to go to Dubai? If we can go visit an in-ground jello swimming pool. Dan said you should have a snorkel. I think that's a good idea. Wait, wouldn't you just... And then you're su- snorkeling in jello. <laughs> and then you're just sucking jello in through the snorkel. Yeah, that's no good. No, it's not good. Yeah, it's, that's... It's- that's right. Every four to five months, I, I come to this and I, I figure I'm like, this would be so special. And I imagine uh, this is actually, I could illustrate this pretty well for anybody that watches Stranger Things. I imagine jumping into it, full send cannonball, but then having the apparatus that they that they put on the, the people when they go into the upside down. Oh, so they can just pull you back out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's common in a lot of movies and films where people are going into areas that they shouldn't. They just, it's even, that's in Ghostbusters even, where like, you have the rope wrapped around the guy so you can just pull him out. Yep, exactly. I mean, alternatively, so, just do it in an above ground pool and you'll be fine. I never thought about that. That's unbelievable to me. Like you were so locked in on this crazy, this crazy underground pool dream that like you didn't even think of the alternative, which is more realistic and less dangerous. Some people who make history never settle, though. They see their vision and their standard, and they don't stop until it's executed. Yeah, but. That's not what this is. <laughs> Elon Musk is going to get Wi-Fi on Mars. Just don't die. That's all. <laughs> Just don't. You're going to be there with me. Yeah, but... Yeah. Yeah, okay. If your friend was drowning in a pool of jello, would you jump in and help? No, because I would die. <laughs> that's actually pretty wise i mean like so it, it, someone else I, just eat your way out you know just you can just eat your way out of it there's no way no you so here's the show. thing here's the thing here's the fool like if you're in it if you're in an underground pool right and you're drowning you can't push yourself up just go to the fucking shallow end of the pool i never thought about that <laughs> It's not a pit that's ten feet in all like in every area. It's ten feet deep, and that's it. Like pools have have they have shallower areas, and they lead not, to to what's known as stairs where you can climb out. I'm not kidding. I like I really do think about this every four to five months, and not very much every time, apparently. Well, no, but it's just one action. It's just me running in a bathing suit, like running just like women with your pal. And you're running, and I'm doing a cannonball, and I'm jumping into the pool, and then it's, and the jello is, you know, like you're just, and it's a crazy cool feeling, but then you're stuck at the bottom. So you're probably so locked into the terrifying feeling of of this happening, that you're like, you're probably just in like in panic mode where you can't actually logically think of a way out. You're just like, oh fuck, I'm stuck here. Well, yes and no, because I think about it as being fun. I think about what's it feel like 
to like rip through the cello like like i feel like it would be like a crazy cool sensation it feels like you're like then, like a cartoon character who's falling down a ladder and every uh-huh. foot breaks the like a rung of a ladder so it's like yes yeah that's what it yes. that's what it strikes me as yeah but then i always come back to it and i'm like oh, it's not because you'll get stuck in that pool of jello and you'll drown and then i'm just like all right i'll think about something else now i like and that i've come it. up with two two solutions for you just tonight so i'm, I'm really glad i could do Dude, that for you legit i i started a bucket list and i'm adding i'm gonna add this to it we'll keep it in mind for the future episodes i can't find sometimes in my notes i can search it and then other times i can't i think we should wrap it up here though because we're at about an hour and uh, oh yeah we're at an hour that's great that's perfect that's the lesson what are we titling it are we titling it googling things i mean we can we can talk about that after we don't yeah, have we don't have to talk about the semantics of the of the of the management of the podcast at the end of the podcast. Did you know it on the first episode of the podcast? Um, I really like it and I don't want to change it. But on like the description on the first episode, have you read it? No, I'll have to go read it. It says I'm leaving the description part to Frank. Something no, oh yeah, I changed that. Awake. I changed. No, that. no, no, it's there. Oh it's my there. god, it's just still there. But leave it. It's so funny. Yeah, that's good. I like that. It's it's it. I think it, it personifies the spirit of the podcast very well. Yeah, I like it a bunch. All, All right. right. Well, we did another episode four. Thank you guys for listening. As always, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes. Yeah, or Apple uh, Apple Podcasts. Is that what it's called now? Yeah, iTunes. iTunes is going through a really interesting thing because Apple Music is Apple Music podcast is a podcast and i think itunes is damn near discontinued that's weird and because it's also google podcasts which we're on and uh stitcher right so stitcher spotify mm-hmm. apple Podcasts, google podcasts basically where podcasts are found i think it trickles to the smaller ones too it should i would hope so thank you guys so much for listening we really appreciate you, you guys are wonderful and we will see you next week bye <laughs>